we are going to design a detention pond. So uh, let's uh, look at the scenario we are going to work on first. So in a greenfield development of 0.6 hectares, the regulations require the peak of the runoff out of the area for one hour duration, 10 year return period, design rainfall unchanged when developed. As a result of development, the impervious fraction increases from 10% to 45%. So when the impervious fraction increases, we all know that the runoff will increase. So the idea here is to design a detention pond that will compensate for that increase uh, of the peak runoff. Uh, the regulations required to control the peak here. So um, here's uh, the model file for the uh, greenfield uh, development area before the development. So it looks like this. So you have uh, 0.6 hectare area with uh, percentage imperviousness 10% and you know uh, with other parameters which I not uh, which I do not go uh, into at the moment so what we need to do is first look at uh, what is the runoff out of the site um, for 10 year return period so here you can see in this model there are uh, one hour storms for different return periods so first I will make sure that I'm using 10 year return period storm and um, let's run this and if you want to see the how the rainfall looks like it looks like this so this is uh, our design storm. So the runoff of um, this link gives us an idea about what will be the the flow out of the system. So um, at the moment before the development the flow out of the system is about um, 6.5 liters per second if you want to see the precise number there is a trick here you can do go to statistics and uh, look at the peak and conduit C2 okay so if you look at it here it will give you the exact number it's about 6.654 so let's let's call it um, 6.7 so our um, goal is to keep the peak um, at 6.7. Now um, let's keep these windows open because they are going to be useful for us uh, to track how our design is progressing. Meanwhile let's go and change the impervious fraction into 45%. That is the post-development estimated impervious fraction. So once you run the system now you can see that the flow increases um, to about 20 liters per second. So our goal is to reduce this 20 liters per second into about 6.7 uh, liters per second. Now to do that we are going to build a detention reservoir here. So you can represent that as a storage unit here. So um, first off, what we can do, of course you need a size for this. Let's keep it very simple, a rectangular shape or, or a cylindrical shape with constant cross-sectional area. So let's have about 20 meters square to start with and look see how it looks like and then it is very important that um, because at the moment if you run this you can see that uh, it doesn't fill up much 
because the reason is if you look at the cross section okay start node in if you look at the cross section you can see that this conduit is connected at the bottom so all the water that is generated uh, from the catchment is easily flowing out of the system so if you want to make this uh, sort of a spillway so we have to then bring it up to the top level of the of the storage to do that um, let's go and change the properties of this first of all this is a circular conduit and for a spillway that is not a good design so let's change it into a rectangular open channel and then we need to give it a bottom width obviously let's give about one meter bottom width and uh, about 0.2 20 centimeter height right and then um, now if you run and look at the cross section you can see that our cross section has become smaller because it's not very high now only 20 centimeters but what we need to do is we have to change the inlet offset that is this pipe has to be connected here at the top to do that let's um, do a bit of thinking so here the maximum depth of this storage is 1.5 meter <coughs> um, well let's make it about 1 meter so that it's a uh, kind of a safe storage for uh, community um, nobody will get drowned so one meter then this is so maximum depth is 0.2 so for the spillway to work the inlet offset should be maximum 0.8 so that so when you run you, you will understand this you can see that the top of the spillway is now flush with the top of the reservoir this is what we want so now let's run the model again so um, oops what is the water level depth yeah so it's filling up and then flowing through the uh, uh, through the uh, uh, through the spillway so uh, now we can see that um, at the moment what is happening is um, you can see this very well in the cross section what is happening is until the storage gets completely filled no water is going out of the system and that's not very good because for two reasons one is we are uh, without slowly getting rid of water uh, even while raining we are ending up needing a bigger reservoir and environmentally also this is not a good idea because uh, there will be stagnant water here so usually what we do is we add an opening at the bottom of the uh, of the reservoir to do that we can add another link to this so um, this time I'm going to add the orifice link so like this I just uh, I just drew it uh, in this roundabout way so that it will not show overlap with this one just for aesthetics and the modeling convenience that's all so now uh, so now you can see the flow is increasing again because the orifice is taking the water down so now we have to tune the orifice so that it will not take too much water away so it will be useful for us to have a look at the uh, the storage level the depth 
of the reservoir. So you can see again the reservoir does not fill up at all. So what we need to do now is to, of course, it's a huge uh, orifice. So what we need is about, let's try around 0 0.5. Uh, that's 5 centimeter opening, circular. So now the flow has reduced uh, quite a lot. So, um, and, the, and the reservoir is filling up nicely. And if you look at what is the flow, this could be useful to plot maybe all the three uh, C2, link 1, that is my orifice, and my uh, and my spillway. So <coughs> you can see what is happening. That is, almost all the water is uh, going through the orifice, and the reservoir is not overflowing by the spillway. So. Um, and actually our design situation is all right already but what you can do is you can make this little bit smaller because you really don't need this much of storage apparently so what you can try is to reduce it to about 15 and let's see what happens it didn't change okay so then something interesting happens. You can see that the reservoir is completely full and meanwhile um, there is a flow from the weir. So you can see this even in the single graph you can see this weird shape here. Uh, that is uh, what is happening. So you can do two things. One you can try to increase the opening of the uh, of the orifice let's say about seven and a half centimeters and see what happens so you can see now so water is not overflowing and our design situation is still okay but I believe that if needed you can make it even smaller in this case no, we, we, we need to come down to 6, so yeah, we are not there. So what we need is we need to come down to 6, right? 6.7 uh, is the maximum before development. So not yet. Make the orifice a little bit smaller. I think now we are we are quite okay so you can see it is not overflowing <coughs> so if we have a storage of about 20 square meter if it's a cylindrical uh, one with constant cross-section uh, and with the orifice opening at the bottom of about uh, 6 centimeter diameter circular one then we we are going to manage our design uh, quite successfully so you can see the maximum flow is 6.3 what we needed was less than 6.7 so um, here we have done it now uh, i want to show you one other point before uh, we stop this that is why do we have this wear or, or the overflow uh, that is needed when heavy rainfalls occur because this was designed now according to regulations for 10 year case but if we have let's say 100 year rainfall what will happen then of course it will be like this and if you look at the flow situation you can see that uh, this is the flow in the weir and sorry this is the flow in the orifice the blue one the purple one is the flow in the weir so 
the weir will take it up and still the system will not flood or anything like that. Uh, so you can see um, if you look at the flooding in this case nodes uh, total flooding so you can see uh, let's uh, make sure that this, this scale is okay yeah nothing is flooding you can also see it in the status report flooding loss is zero but it, by any chance if we did not have this spillway let me delete it and show uh, what will happen first uh, let me save this okay and then let me g delete this one and see what happens and okay and then if you look at flooding now I'm sure there will be a flooding loss yeah here so what is happening is actually this uh, this uh, this reservoir is now flooding so you can see this is the depth and this is the flooding amount so that is why we need to have a spillway so hopefully this uh, might have given you some initial idea how you can go about uh, designing a detention uh, reservoir to uh, capture the peak of uh, uh, of storm drainage from a uh, from a developed area.